First off, I want to thank the grace of heaven and the virtues of the masters, um, mercy of the grand predecessors, predecessors, uh, transmitting masters, and everyone here today um, to, for this opportunity to talk about the six paramitas. Today we are on number five, <coughs> concentration or samadhi. Actually, I'll be using samadhi, the term samadhi instead. Uh, but, uh, but before, again, once again, uh, I need to go back and to last week's thing to make slight correction. Uh, where is the... Oh, for the number. Um, <clears throat> okay, the second one here. Um, uh, diligence is the proposition. <clears throat> the strive for, for time and then... Original I had a mentioning us space, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, that's <laughs> literally that's what it is. But uh, basically, it's to substantiate our learning. So basically, to also to fill up, you know, fill up that empty space within us. Okay, so uh, and we do that. We can do that with the the learning or you know experiences uh, that we have. Um, but <clears throat> um, so yeah, and then so basically, diligence. You know, also we want to. We could pursue the study of the Tao, you know, continue that, that uh, pursuit of the study, right, to learn, keep learning. Uh, and then another slight difference here is the first one. Diligence is the vital organ of traveling step by step from near to far and reaching high from low. Um, originally I said <clears throat> remaining humble at the peak of achievement, which is true, actually. That, I mean, that's true. Uh, this, this is not this is not incorrect, but um, <clears throat> going from low to high, uh, same thing as going from you know like going from near to far. So that that kind of this translation would match more to what was in, in the rest of this line here. Okay, but this is minor that minor difference here. Um, okay, all right. So let's get back to. Uh, All right, so we're back to here. Uh, okay. All right. So uh, the chief examiner of the three realms, he says that samadhi, yeah, I'm going to use samadhi because, well, it's shorter than concentration, but, but it's actually, concentration is not really the complete, I mean, it's part of samadhi, but all right. So, uh, uh, and you will encounter probably the word samadhi, um, if you're if you're looking into literature, uh, you know you, you you'll see like Diana too, but um, more <coughs> samadhi. <coughs> okay, so uh, it settles the scattered, disturbed, and restless mind. Right? <coughs> Our mind, yeah, it's um, it, we don't realize it maybe, but it's very scattered. Scattered. What I what I mean by scattered is. It's all over the place, okay? So, you know, whether it's, it's running wild with <coughs> thoughts, ideas, uh, um, <clears throat> or, you know, it's just the attention of our mind is all over. It's, it's, it's all over the place, outside, right? <clears throat> uh, based on what we are perceiving through our senses, okay? What will we see, what we hear, what we feel, um, all these. Okay, so <clears throat> so the mind, therefore, is... Yeah. is it's being pulled in all sorts of different directions, um, so that that's what's scattered. Uh, and the opposite of that would be to to pull it back. We pull back our mind to to kind of settle our mind to bring it back, um, which is really it's also the when we say um, uh, what is it? Uh, it well, in Chinese, we guan fang zhao. So it's basically self reflection. Okay, reflect um, back to ourself. Okay, so it's bring back our mind. <coughs> okay. Um, and it's, of course, it's very restless. Our mind is constantly, you know, popping up <coughs> new uh, thoughts all the time. So, you know, one of the, the part of the practice is to not have thoughts, you know, not keep having thoughts in our mind. Um, and it, it's and it's also, you know, the, the scattered, yeah, and disturbed, <coughs> disturbed by the external, um, by the forms, basically that that we are perceiving. Okay. So, uh, so with, through samadhi, um, 
Now, samadhi also, you know, you can say, you know, besides concentration, you know, some, you can say it's kind of like a meditation, but it's not, not really that kind of like the meditation that we, most people talk about outside, okay? Um, but, <clears throat> but yeah, um, concentration is kind of what we use, okay? It's kind of focus the mind within, okay? Um, it can break off or relinquish all karmic affinities, right? We all have karmic affinities from the past, um, through our karmic actions, right? Um, and but by uh, achieving samadhi, by um, basically, you know, we still the mind. We don't. The mind is not is also not attached to the karma, not attached to these affinities. Um, then that you know, it's basically letting them go. Uh, then we can, you know, having this <coughs> settling our minds. Sorry. Uh, allows us to to let them go okay um <clears throat> we can stop uh the false misleading and improper thoughts right so don't let these uh <clears throat> thoughts arise um and let's see yeah <clears throat> and then also uh we can eliminate a confused and scattered mind okay um yeah you know, confused from the buddha's point of view right from the enlightened point of view you know the the most people all sentient beings are confused and because they 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 believe the the reality that the physical reality is the true reality and so therefore they pursue the things within this uh this reality which is actually it's a false reality it's a, it's not the true thing so that that's that's what you know confused and lost you can say uh, with practice we can concentrate like a mountain and not be disturbed by devils uh <clears throat> so if we can truly uh, achieve this state of samadhi, you know, have this this true concentration of mind, <clears throat> then it'll be very, like, um, solid, firm foundation, and it won't be disturbed by, you know, the any kind of uh, influences, external influences, um, or, you know, influences by, you know, we say the devils. It's basically, you know, if we're being tested, right, or, or tempted, um, you know, we, it won't <clears throat> we won't fall for the those temptations, okay, or, or the the whatever it is, the enticements or uh, attractions, uh, none of that, okay. So that's the ultimate goal. Basically, the mind then is unmoving, right? It's unmoving like that mountain; it doesn't move, all right. Um, <clears throat> only it only moves when it wants to, okay. So it's not moved by these other other uh, factors, okay. Okay, so Holy Teacher says, in the Dharma ending age, which is now, I mean, the time that we're living in, this white era, is uh, it, we must take responsibility for our own transcendent, to, to be able to transcend life and death, the cycle of life and death, right? So we have, in this white era, it's when we have universal salvation, <clears throat> uh, anyone who has the affinity can um receive the Tao, cultivate and <clears throat> ultimately to transcend uh like the cycle of life and death. Of course we have to cultivate. I mean if we don't just receiving the Tao, we're not gonna transcend. All right. So um we don't want to further extend the karmic affinities that we have. So you know the the karmic affinities that we already have uh, we want them to end, right? We want to resolve them. We want them to be resolved in this life. Uh, because as long as we have these karmic affinities, um, <clears throat> you know, extending them, it could be like, you know, it, you know, we have karmic affinities, but then if we don't deal with them uh, properly, if we still have attachments, if we, if we try to, uh, if we're not, <laughs> if we're not grateful, we don't appreciate, if we, if we, try to fight back or we have resentment, anger uh, towards, towards what's happening to us, um, that will just extend the karmic affinities, you know, <clears throat> perpetuate them, okay? So, so then there's no end to that, and we, we we're still going to be stuck here in the cycle uh, to, to resolve them eventually, okay, hopefully. <laughs> um, so... So we don't want to further extend these karmic affinities, right? We want to be able to let them go, um, uh, deal with it as, you know, as needed, and then let them go. <clears throat> By letting affinity take its course, right? So that's 
uh, we, we can transcend all impediments and truly become unfettered, right? So um, that is, <clears throat> uh, okay, so, uh, so basically we don't want to have or create any more good or bad affinities, right? These are all kind of karmic affinities <clears throat> with sentient beings, okay? Um, basically, because these are any, any, even good affinities with sentient beings, right? <clears throat> That's, there's, there's a string attached, okay? Uh, bad affinities, of course, there's also a string attached. Uh, <clears throat> and, but we, what we really want to establish is uh, Buddha affinity uh, with, with sentient beings. Um, and that is done through, basically, we, if we act according to <clears throat> the principles of Wu Wei and uh, Sui Yuan, okay, so basically you can say the, the egoless, the motiveless, the desireless um, actions, <clears throat> uh, and just, you know, basically following the affinity, the course of affinity. Um, and if we, you know, using our, basically like the the uh, the four immeasurable minds of a bodhisattva or Buddha, right? You know, basically you have <clears throat> compassion or, you know, maybe uh, uh, mercy, right? Loving kindness, you know, joy or rejoicing with others and, and also equanimity. If we treat sentient beings uh, in that way, then that that is just, a, a, there's, it's a Buddha affinity rather than we don't create the karmic affinity of either good or bad. <clears throat> okay, so there's then there's no strings attached. <laughs> so if there's no strings attached, then that that won't uh, keep us here. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> so and then so to stop uh, the false, misleading, and private thoughts, right? Um, e <clears throat> there are things that we can do. So again, this is like it's all in our mind here. So <clears throat> so we can like silently recite the mantras. Uh, the whole, you know, hold to the, the wordless sutra, which is um, basically like the first treasure. <laughs> uh, silently recite the Buddha's name, for example. Um, or we, we, or can we, we can recite the Maitreya Disaster Rescue Sutra, right? We talked about that in the past. Um, <clears throat> recite his, the Maitreya's title. Right? At the end of that sutra, it says, Namo Tenyan Taibao Omi Tofo. Okay, that's his, that's his, I guess, the title, his title um, or name. Uh, and uh, so just reciting, actually reciting any sutra uh, is basically the part of the, yeah, you can say the purpose, you know, is, is to concentrate the mind on that. Um, and it's not so that we don't, <laughs> if, if you can really concentrate on reciting the sutra, <clears throat> so your mind is, you know, has no thought of anything else. Right, you're not you're not uh, worrying about oh you know is it time yet or is it <laughs> um, you know what, what I'm going to do next? Uh, then that's concentration, okay. <clears throat> um, that in itself is not not necessarily samadhi, but uh, you know if you if you really can get to that uh, a level of of uh, you know this this reciting with with no other thoughts uh, and true sincerity. <clears throat> with a lot of sincerity, um, then yeah, that that's <clears throat> that's this concentration. Okay, so that that's what we want. Uh, it's we're kind of emptying the mind, right? Um, keeping any distractions out of our mind. <clears throat> okay, so so true samadhi is where the mind is undisturbed, and we are unattached to external forms. Um, Self-reflection and concentration on the Buddha nature can eliminate a confused and scattered mind and stop false, misleading, improper, and distracting thoughts. Okay, yeah. So we have to let go of, we not not be attached to <coughs> any forms, <coughs> external forms. Um, external forms. <coughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. Actually, it's it's you know the forms. <laughs> it's interesting. We say external forms, but it's actually. Yeah, external forms are what we tend to we see with like looks like we can see things, right? We see the forms, um, but actually, then there's also a corresponding form in our mind that that is, is corresponds to the external form as well. But so it's it's you know all these forms uh, we have to let go of those, right? <clears throat> with uh, with the power concentration, 
as stable as a mountain, right, then the self-nature or Buddha nature can become the master and devils can invade and disturb our mind, right? So the ultimate goal is to have our Buddha nature, have the Buddha nature be in charge, okay? So that, that is the true master, not the ego self, not that that self, okay? That's that's the false self and, and plus, you know, plus all the senses, right? they should not be in charge. Uh, <clears throat> So if the Buddha nature is in charge, then it will not be uh, influenced by whatever the senses tell it, okay? <clears throat> so that, that is the ultimate. So being a Buddha means <laughs> really uh, it's when the Buddha nature is in charge, then we're a Buddha, okay? So, um, <clears throat> and then so nothing, nothing can affect us at that point, right? It has complete stillness of mind, right? Uh, okay, so... <clears throat> Uh, Holy Jesus. All right, so Zen, yeah, this Tan is, yeah, you can, it's Zen or Tan, okay. <laughs> it's talking about the principles of the mind, uh, the awakening of the true nature to the Sambodhi, with Sambodhi is the wisdom of Buddha, okay. So um, <clears throat> this, uh, basically you can say, you know, the, the realization of the Tao is, you know, we can achieve that through the proper, when the proper awareness uh, is in when when our mind has the proper awareness, which is you know this this is the sambodhi, okay, the the wisdom of the Buddha. Uh, so <clears throat> so this is yeah. So it's it's obviously it's all it's in the mind, um, and then stillness. Okay, so the ding tan ding. So it's kind of separate the two words here. Stillness leads to tranquility, which puts one at ease, which facilitates deliberation. Producing the ultimate state of no evil, or you could say the upright or proper mind. <clears throat> so this this should sound kind of familiar because it's it's from the great also the great learning has uh, has basically says something like this too. So it's very uh, very close to that. <clears throat> um, basically, uh, <clears throat> so once we can still you know calm our mind, still the mind. Uh, then that that will lead to this inner peace, this this tranquil tranquility, state of tranquility, state of serenity. <clears throat> that then puts us at ease. Okay, so um, which then facilitates, lets us be able to deliberate or contemplate uh, on things, and then ultimately. Uh, achieving or producing the, this final state of, uh, we say no evil, but it's uh, in, in the great learning says, you know, the, the ultimate are, are the uh, the utmost good, okay, the utmost kindness or whatever, utmost good, okay, <clears throat> um, but that's that's the Buddha mind, okay, so uh, so yeah, but it starts from you know stillness, so samadhi or this concentration of samadhi, <clears throat> you know, uh, is a critical step here, um, the first step to achieving that. <clears throat> uh, and as it says, taking form gives rise to motion, departing from forms ceases the arising and extinction. Uh, anytime there are forms, um, basically, oh, wait, before, uh, before, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. <clears throat> uh, there is creation, and you know destruction or, or arising and extinction or birth and death okay so uh <clears throat> when the form uh you know when it takes something takes form uh obviously it, it's going to be in a constant change okay it'll be in a constant cycle of change uh and you know a birth and, and death or or <clears throat> beginning and end okay so uh so that's the motion that is uh all right so if we depart, you know, get away from the forms, or we don't, uh, uh, we detached, we are detached from the forms, then, then we can end that cycle of arising and extinction, right? So it's, it's very important uh, that we do that, because um, all forms are subject to this, okay? So only the, the pure mind, mind of stillness, body mind, or, you know, the Buddha nature, the body mind, yeah, um, has no form, okay, so it, it doesn't, uh, there's no beginning, no end to that, um, but anything else, you know, we create forms, uh, they pop up, and 
they, they <coughs> go through some kind of uh, change and eventually they disappear as well. Okay, so, <coughs> um, uh, so you know, this, right, so in, in the mind, so when for forms are inside of our mind, <coughs> uh, the result is uh, we create kind of a dualistic view of things, of right and wrong, for example. Um, right, so, <coughs> so we have to basically, uh, if we want to transcend this cycle of birth and death, then we need to, you know, not have desires or cling to the forms and to basically, yeah, to be able to, and also to, you know, to freely, uh, to free ourselves from them, to, to relinquish uh, these forms, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, yeah. Uh, actually, anything that we gain through uh, through forms, right? I mean, the forms originally there are no forms, right? Our our Buddha, the Buddha nature uh, is formless, um, and and but yet it has everything. I mean, it has everything it needs. Okay, so so actually, the, the Buddha nature is everything. Okay, so 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 there's nothing lacking in the Buddha nature. But then we you know we we start grasping. Uh, or become attached to forms, or we seek, we pursue forms. Uh, these are, we're getting something, we're gaining something uh, from, which didn't really exist in the first place. And then, and that is what's considered evil, really. Okay, so that, you know, this is the, the previous thing says, state of, no evil, all right, so, so we don't, um, so anything that we can gain is, is not part of the Buddha nature, and it's, it's, you know, in this case, we consider it evil. I mean, the Chinese, I mean, that's, that's, evil is only a part of that meaning. I mean, it's one of the meanings of that, actually. The evil is a little bit narrow here. Um, but you can say, you know, it's, it's like deviant or it's not, you know, not proper, um, things like that. So, so there, therefore, you know, the, to ultimately, you know, the goal is to achieve the state of Buddhahood, achieve the state of Nirvana is to, is, to get rid of all the forms, okay. So samadhi, you know, kind of helps us to get there. <clears throat> uh, the skill and practice of the fifth paramita leads to the ultimate harmony with yin and yang. Okay, so, um, yeah, the <clears throat> remember the the Tao is, you know, contains both the yin and yang. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> and for us, if we if we treat them kind of like in a dualistic way. Uh, you know that's that's the like the good and bad uh <clears throat> then you know that that dualistic the, the, that's we're, we're we're treating it as forms and and we want to let, we, we can't we don't want to dwell into or get into become attached to forms and so the harmony we want to kind of harmonize uh with that uh and and but not you know have that dualistic view it's it's really the yin and yang you know, in the Tao, is it's just oneness, okay, of the yin and yang, right? Um, and then so, so here, so here it says, you know, the time thing, uh, basically the samadhi is, uh, is well, uh, through samadhi, you can achieve, you know, uh, enlightenment or attain the Tao, okay? Uh, yeah, enlightenment, right? Um, okay. Uh, okay, so... Uh, here it says uh, samadhi is holding to the one of external detachment of, from forms and internal serenity of the mind. Okay, so that's kind of what we were talking about. Um, basically, so you can say, uh, yeah, on the external, um, yeah, I guess at one level or the external side of things, you can say that, you know, uh, it's, Getting away from the forms, detaching, not not be, not being attached to the forms, uh, and then internally, then we also have the stillness of mind, where the the mind is not uh, moved by the by forms or by anything. Okay, uh, so so it's kind of at two levels: the external, internal. Okay, uh, and I think basically most of these are there's kind of like. It's either it's talking about either the external and internal or like at different levels, a lower level and a higher level. OK. Um, so <clears throat> the holding to the one. Uh, yeah. So it's basically the, the harmony, the unity of, uh, of these two things. <clears throat> um, 
Samadhi is the juncture of a pure, still mind and a clear and bright, true nature. Um, juncture, well, yeah, maybe you can say like the confluence of these two, all right? The, the joining, the coming together of these two, all right? Uh, so this is kind of like, you know, the, having the pure and still mind, <clears throat> and that's the mind, so, and then the, the clear and bright, true nature, okay, so that's the essence. So you can say the mind, you know, the mind is, is the, uh, I don't know, I guess the active part or, or, or basically it's the, the, the function of this essence, okay. Um, but this is, this is I, I think this is kind of like basically saying uh, in Chinese they say ming xing jian xing, okay. So basically to, to have a very clear mind uh, to see the true nature, okay. So it's kind of similar to that. Um, Okay, samadhi is the reality of seeing the truth of all phenomena and all phenomena returning to emptiness. Okay, um, yeah, actually, well, if I, yeah, I mean, this, it could, you could also say dharmas too, okay, so um, basically, <clears throat> uh, the, once when we are in that state of the, the samadhi, right, we, we can see um, the truth, which is, you could say the truth of the phenomena is, you know, the Dharma Datu, or uh, that's the true reality, okay. Uh, uh, I mean, we, we, or we can see through uh, the, I guess you can say the, the, the um, what is the, the impermanence or the, the, the of, uh, of from all phenomena, okay, and that realize that all phenomena, this all, all the forms, they ultimately are empty, okay? The, the true emptiness uh, or the true reality of the Dharma Datu is, there's, it's no form and yet there, it can create forms, okay? Um, so, so, but anyways, so, so realizing what, what the true reality is, which is, which is not based on, you know, the, the, the forms. The forms are not permanent, right? They, they don't, they're, they're always changing. They're always subject to conditions. So that is, that is not the, the true reality of things. So that's why ultimately they are empty. Uh, in fact, everything, <clears throat> all forms, uh, even our, you know, our existence here, you can say, is, is, is emptiness. I mean, it's empty. Okay, so it's not, it's, it's, it's part of this phenomena, right? Uh, our view of the world is through um, the, the five skandhas, right? That, that's how we view the world. Uh, how we view what we consider to be reality. And so, uh, but that is kind of a, you can say it's a false view, okay? Um, because we, we, we have a, t we, we've kind of gotten attached to the forms and the phenomena. We think that's real, okay? But it's, it's not, all right. Uh, so samadhi is the clear understanding of the one point transmission to know, one point, well, didn't say transmission, but one point transmission, yeah, to know the e eternal and the underlying mystical s essence of everything. Um, <clears throat> now, okay, so uh, basically this is, uh, yeah, uh, you know, the to become enlightened or to awaken, you know, that, that can happen in an instant. So it's like, when we receive the Tao, there's, we receive the point transmission, and uh, we can be awakened in that moment, okay, at that moment. Um, and, <clears throat> but, and everything, oh, uh, obviously, <laughs> for, for, for most of us, you know, we're, we, we're not really fully enlightened, and we don't realize the second part of this, which is that, wow, there is this underlying, myst yeah, I say mystical essence, I mean, this, <clears throat> this, it's not quite emptiness, okay, it's not quite empty because there's something there that this mystical thing aspect to it that's uh, you can say there's like a i don't know like a consciousness or or there's there's a a force or there's a a will or or something there okay in in that emptiness, and that that's what gives rise to can give rise to everything right but anyway that that's the Tao okay that's the essence uh and so, yeah, so that, that's, that's what that is. Okay, so um, now the, the, so that the, the point transmission or, or awakening uh, can happen in an instant, but 
uh, the the eternal aspect is we, we should we have to maintain that stillness. Um, okay, maintain that stillness, and that with, with that stillness, then we can we can know. Um, you know, we can have that. We can always know uh, uh, or, or or be one with um, this this eternal uh, essence. Okay. <clears throat> um, right. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah. Actually, oh, back here. Uh, actually, the the, the scene of truth. Okay. So. Um, yeah, basically, without samadhi or 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 this time, okay, time to, yeah, all right, without that, uh, uh, basically, oh, okay, so the the eyes, basically, like our senses, they see the forms, right? But the 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 mind sees can see the truth, okay. So so again, don't be deluded by by the the senses, right? And and seeing the forms, um, right? So without this samadhi, then the mind, though, will be bound, become bound by the forms, okay? So, uh, so it again, you know, becomes attached to the forms and it becomes influenced uh, by the forms and be subject to the conditions of the forms, right? So Holy Teacher actually, he, you know, he, he wants us to really get, get deeper, go beyond the surface, right, of things and make sure we, we really understand or realize the essence, right? Uh, of things um, to, to, uh, to really know our Buddha nature, okay? To become one with the Buddha nature. Okay, <clears throat> so Samadhi is the uh, secret of, uh, it's the basic uh, reason to become enlightened and reveal our true potential, which is the Buddha nature, okay? <clears throat> um, so, yeah, uh, basically, you know, it's, it's, uh, Samadhi then. You know, allows us to become enlightened, right? Uh, once we are, when we can still <clears throat> the mind, then our Buddha nature can become, can be in charge, right? It can, it can be the master. Uh, so when our conscious mind, when our senses are in charge, then, you know, that kind of suppresses the Buddha nature and it suppresses the wisdom uh, of the Buddha nature. So, so having that calm and still, you know, the tranquil mind then uh, allows us to reveal that the Buddha nature will, will then, you know, naturally reveal itself, okay, through wisdom, right? Through, and then that wisdom will be uh, manifested through uh, our various, uh, our actions, you know, our, our, our words uh, and our thoughts as well, um, okay. So, uh, samadhi is the dependence of, ex uh, yeah, I could say external heterodox practice and the absolute stillness of mind. Um, yeah, I don't know. This, this may be sound kind of confusing here <laughs> with, with this word dependence, but basically, you know, the practice, uh, there are different practices. So, this, this, what's called the heterodox practice or practices is basically, you know, the sulu dong jing thing, which is, you know, the, the, we're not supposed to go, practice those things, because that's not the ultimate, okay? That's not the ultimate. Those are still kind of stuck on forms, okay? Um, basically, uh, you know, the, 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 there are like four, I guess they kind of categorize in four different types. Like one is like the magic arts, or witchcraft. Um, uh, another one is the geo geomancy or divination, right? Being able to like <laughs> doing fortune telling, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and then the third one is like martial arts, qigong, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then the fourth one is is meditation. Okay, so um, now these are these practices are they're okay for? I mean, they they can help probably in terms of like the our physical being, our physical existence, uh, but they are not the ultimate. They they cannot uh, achieve transcendence. Okay, transcending cycle of life and death, or transcending all the forms. Uh, so. Um, but so that that's what we, we need the absolute stillness of mind to do that right the the mind the root butong the one that doesn't move okay the mind that doesn't move okay so so that that is the completely still mind which again you know that allows us to reveal the, the Buddha nature okay the Buddha nature then can be in charge okay so so I mean but these are you know you can say it's like a different level of practice for a lot of the 
the red era, the, you know, the practices is in these heterodox practices. Um, uh, but, you know, in, when we receive the Tao and we cultivate the Tao, we, we, we are looking to achieve the highest level, which is, you know, through this, it's not through those practices. Uh, the, the danger of pursuing those practices is that we get stuck on the forms. We get, we get stuck on the, on the, the methods, uh, and we say, we think that that's the ultimate, but it's not, okay. Um, all right, so samadhi is the perseverance through knowing the truth and cultivating the true principles in the face of different v views, okay. So, uh, yeah, we have to persevere. Uh, the, the, you know, everyone has, we, we, we encounter lots of different views, different opinions, different ideas about, about things uh, and, or about reality, about the truth. Uh, so, but we have to know what the truth is, and we cultivate following those true principles. Um, that you know, it's stuff that we learn here in, in class here uh, in the temple. Uh, and if we can stick to that, right, then we can per, uh, persevere. You know, so, so we don't let <laughs> these other views. Uh, you know, whether it's like you know, maybe talking about those heterodox practices. They say, oh yeah, hey, this is great. You know, come 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 join us, we do this meditation or do this Qigong practice or whatever, I can, I can teach you how to, uh, you know, transform uh, rocks into gold, you know, Th this, we should, uh, we, we should ignore those, okay, so uh, we should know what the true way is. Uh, the Tao is the highest uh, way, the high highest path, okay, so we should follow that um, to transcend, because that's the only one that will allow us to transcend the uh, cycle of life and death, right? Okay. <clears throat> uh, and then, so samadhi is the gathering up of our vexations, delusions, disorder, and confusion. Okay, so all these things <clears throat> in our mind. So basically, uh, we have to rein in, right? Keep, get our mind under control, right? Rein in our conscious mind. Um, we look inward, reflect inward uh, to... And... You know, try to achieve that state of stillness, uh, then obviously, you know, that gets rid of all of these things. Okay. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, samadhi is the insight of staying in the Tao and being in harmony with heaven's mandate. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah. So, a lot, you know, if, if we are, if our mind is, you know, full of these other ideas of, or uh, concept, uh, uh, yeah, or, or and attachments to other uh, these uh, various different types of teachings and things like that. <clears throat> that'll kind of uh, you know keep us away from <laughs> from from the Tao, really. Uh, so, but so we have to have that insight <clears throat> to to really know that yeah, this is this is the truth. What is the truth? Uh, and it, the, the way of the Tao, the Tao is the, the, the true way to transcend. So um, then, so that will allow us to stay in, the, uh, to cultivate in the Tao and to also be in harmony with whatever, you can say, heaven's mandate, heaven's will. Okay, so uh, whatever uh, the way of heaven is, we, can, we follow that way, which is also, you can say, it's, it's, it's also our Buddha nature, the Buddha nature, okay? So following the way of the Buddha nature as well. You can say a conscience, all right? <clears throat> Samadhi is the end point of clearly uh, recognizing the grace of heaven and the virtues of the holy teacher in the implementing the golden thread or implementation of the golden thread, okay? So uh, uh, basically, the, you know, the, the whole... Uh, purpose of this golden thread, right? The golden thread, you know, the, the, there's there are different golden threads. Okay, the, the one golden thread is our direct link is our Buddha nature to to heaven. Okay, to to God, or Lamu. Okay, but <clears throat> the other golden thread in this world is the the the, the link the, or the lineage, um, the transmission of the Tao from from the beginning, right through the sixty four patriarchs, generations of patriarchs. To, to us here today. Uh, and really the, the ultimate purpose is, to, is you know, so that's why it's called the end point, is, is to, you know, achieve uh, the nirvana, to achieve enlightenment, okay? And so that's what samadhi, you know, will help us, allow us to do that. 
right? So, and of course, this, this golden thread, you know, all the patriarchs, uh, the predecessors, all those teachers and sages and saints, they all, uh, you know, we, we, have to rec we have to realize that they, they sacrificed, they made sacrifices to, to continue this golden thread so that it can reach us to here today. Um, and so, you know, we recognize that, you know, <laughs> always be grateful um, to the, for the grace of heaven, appreciate the grace of heaven, and also the virtues of the holy teachers um, in allowing this to happen, allowing us to ha uh, be able to receive the Tao and to cultivate and to learn about the Tao uh, and to ultimately achieve uh, the enlightenment. Okay, uh, Samadhi is the bedrock of the Tao lineage, okay, um, tracing back from ancient times to the present. So again, yeah, it's, it's this whole... This golden thread, the lineage, uh, it, it's again actually all, you know, all the uh, uh, cultivators, the the patriarchs of the past, <clears throat> they all cultivated, you know, the, the same things, you know, the six paramitas. So so samadhi is also part of that um, cultivation, and you know, it, it's always been. So it's not like oh today oh we we, we practice samadhi. Uh, but it, it, they practice it from the very beginning as well. The, that's uh, it's the same practice. Okay, so um, all right, so that's why it's it's from from the very beginning to the present day. <clears throat> Samadhi is the foundation of unchangeable truth, and it's not changing even under strain. Okay, so uh, yeah, it is under strain. I mean, you can say stress or under uh, various conditions that <clears throat> maybe extreme conditions, for example. Uh, yeah, basically, the truth, um, <clears throat> and basically the true, the principles, the true principles, they do not change uh, under any of those circumstances. And so, uh, so, but obviously, you know, when <clears throat> when under various conditions, uh, remember we, we've talked about before, where the principle is unchanging, but the implementation, I guess, uh, you know, is adaptable, is flexible, okay, um, without, without, you know, uh, violating the principle, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, so samadhi is the righteous energy to settle any differences in the temple, right? We, we have to have a calm, uh, calm mind, right? Not, not... <laughs> Uh, have a you know uh, a temperament right? We have temper right. Uh, we get angry, whatever. That uh, <clears throat> having so a uh, very calm and still mind, then we can deal with things uh, appropriately, right? Then we can settle any kind of differences that there may be, um, whether it's in the temple or anywhere really. Uh, and so, so it's you know it's kind of like this righteous energy i mean you can only have that when when you have that uh still stillness of mind okay <clears throat> there were the emotions aren't you know taking over uh we're not driven by the emotions or driven by you know any, any anything else like biases uh prejudices uh anything okay um and then then you can say when we deal with things then it will be completely fair it will be fair uh, it will be just, it will be uh, appropriate um, uh, to the situation. Samadhi is the tidying up of confusing um, ideas and corrected by our spiritual orientation. Um, <clears throat> so, again, right, so we, we're kind of getting rid of uh, the confusing um, confusion within our mind uh, and it's kind of like having we have the spiritual or uh, spiritual orientation or you know say maybe guidance okay the guidance uh, so uh, that will help uh, us to kind of get rid of the because the confusing the the ideas and thoughts and those things are all in our conscious mind uh, and the spiritual aspect you can say well that's like the the Buddha nature the Bodhi mind which then can help to correct that okay so but in order for <laughs> to 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 kind of uh, have that, the help from, from that spiritual guidance, it, it, we have to have a calm mind, okay? So uh, by calming our mind, then, of course, we'll have that wisdom, right? that wisdom 
uh, <coughs> to to help us uh, to overcome these things, get rid of these things, right? <clears throat> so samadhi is the ability to be calm and still while in motion and to respond while in stillness. Okay. Um, so this, <clears throat> right, uh, Calm and still while in motion, right? So that that sounds like a paradox, but it's not. I mean, the calm and still is in our mind, right? We can we can <laughs> we can physically be doing things, um, but our mind should not be moving. Okay, so the mind, right? The, there's the uh, that that little bit in the the sixth the platform sutra, right? Where where uh, there are these two monks, uh, they're arguing over. Whether oh one they see this flag right fluttering uh, in the wind and one monk says oh it that's it's it's the flag that's moving right and then the other monk is arguing saying no no it's the wind that's that's making it move uh, and then you know six patriarch Wainang comes across them this argument and then he says no it's your mind that's moving okay so uh, basically everything really. It goes back to the, you know, if you want to look at the source of the, uh, everything, it, it's in the mind, okay? So the motion, it's all coming from the mind. Uh, so, you know, only when, uh, so th so that's regardless of what's happening externally or, you know, with our bodies, whatever, uh, the, there's motion. But if the mind is still, uh, that's the important thing, okay? So that, in other words, it, it doesn't get influenced. It doesn't, uh, we can then do things uh, the, the right, proper way. We'll do things correctly. We'll do things uh, well, um, as opposed to being, you know, so if our mind is, as opposed to when it's being distracted, okay, uh, and it's moving, basically anything that's, if it's not still, right, empty, basically, uh, then it's, the mind is in motion, okay, uh, and then so, but we can respond while in stillness, so in that stillness of mind, uh, there's a response, now, now, when we have like desires, when we have attachment to desires, we, we want or we ask for things, right? That that the mo the mind is not still, right? That that's 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 the mind in motion. Okay, so uh, but response, the you know it's interesting when when our mind is still, when we don't have any desires, when we don't have uh, those, you know, oh I I I I'm asking the Buddhas for help. Uh, we don't do that, uh, naturally there is a response, okay, um, while, while our mind is still, when we, when we don't have those desires, when we don't have those requests or, or demands, uh, then there is a natural response uh, that comes, uh, and so that's kind of like the, the it, it sounds kind of uh, counterintuitive, or uh, it, it's certainly not the way we are taught <laughs> about things like, hey, if you want something, you have to ask for it, or you, you know, or you have to take action, right? Um, but it, it's kind of the opposite. The Tao, the way this, this, you know, this mystical essence works is that, you know, when we are still, when we are not asking for it, we're not pursuing it, we get it, okay? That, that's the response we get, right? Uh, so samadhi um, is the secret of residing at the mystical portal, okay, that, you know, and let's say first treasure and using the contract or the third treasure. All right, okay, so um, basically, <clears throat> uh, this is when, oh, okay, uh, basically, okay, so we we have to, right, the first treasure or, yeah, that's basically, we're talking about the Buddha nature, okay, so we, we want to, our mind should be one with our Buddha nature, or the Bodhi mind, okay, the Bodhi mind, so uh, that is the mind of stillness, the mind of wisdom, all right, actually. Uh, and, uh, but we use, uh, so the, and then the, the so that's uh, kind of like the essence, if you will. Then we use the, the contract, which is third treasure, which represents the, the active part. So the, the being able to do things. Um, so just like the, you know, the, the line before we're talking about the, calmness while still in motion, we are always residing in our Buddha nature while we are practicing or we are conducting, you know, uh, where are we cultivating or, or, or propagating the Tao or conducting Tao affairs or anything. Um, uh, and that is, uh, 
So that then is also, you know, that's that's Wu Wei, okay, uh, where there's no, it's not driven by any desires or any motive or ego or anything like that, okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so samadhi is the joy of being everywhere but not leaving the Buddha nature. So we can be anywhere and everywhere, um, but you know, we don't leave the Buddha nature because the, the mind is still. So we are, remember just the previous line, we are residing it with the Buddha nature. Okay, we are residing with the Buddha nature. Uh, and so, so we don't leave it if, as long as our mind is still, calm, you know, tranquil, uh, we are with the Buddha nature. Uh, and then so we can be anywhere in any situation, any circumstances, any conditions, it doesn't matter. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> it, won't, it won't bother us, okay? It won't, uh, it's not a problem for us, all right? So samadhi is the dignified postures of sitting instead of sitting, uh, sorry, standing instead of sitting, sitting instead of reclining. Um, so it's, it's kind of the high, the high, taking the higher level, right? So, uh, now, uh, I mean, yeah, so basically, you know, sitting, uh, standing is, is kind of like the, the more dignified uh, uh, posture than, than sitting, uh, and then sitting is also more dignified than, than reclining or lying down, okay? So, um, you know, I, we, we kind of show this too, you know, like when, uh, let's say at the beginning of class, right? So, it, you know, the, the speaker walks in, Right, everyone should actually stands up, right? It's kind of a show of respect. Actually, this happens in society too, right? When the president uh, goes uh, to the lectern, the, the podium uh, for a briefing, you know, everyone stands up when, when he enters the room. Uh, and same with like a judge, right? The judge enters the courtroom and everyone has to stand up. Okay, so, so standing is, is more dignified than the sitting. Uh, and then obviously sitting is also more dignified than lying down. Uh, uh, but okay, so... So anyway, samadhi, yeah. Uh, samadhi is the mortal transformation of drying up water and vacating the fire. Okay, that's, that's kind of the literal thing that it's talking about here. But uh, uh, that is it's kind of meaning getting rid of the yin and filling up with the yang. Okay, so this is part of the I Jing and the I Jing. Okay, so uh, for all, and it's for all such beings. Um, basically, the moral transformation. So this bian yi, okay, so that's actually part of the bian yi sensu. Okay, so that term meaning uh, it's a mortal transformation of our of our yeah I guess, our existence i guess um from transforming from one to the next all right so uh for us to transcend the cycle of life and death right we need to uh basically uh get rid of the the negative right the yin the negative and fill it up with more the positive the yang okay uh, the literal term, yeah, the, the water and the fire, right? In the I Ching, the, 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 they have the, well, male and female, uh, there's, there's the nine and the six, right? These represent male and female, um, but these also represent uh, the specific positions in the, the I Ching, the hexagrams, right? And basically, we need to fill, because when, when <laughs> basically, we're, we're trying to restore our, so uh, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the diagram of the hexagrams here, but uh, we, we want to restore ourselves to the original, uh, you can say before we're, we're, we're born into this phenomenal world. Okay, so once we're born in this phenomenal world, we have, it, it has a certain uh, uh, form, uh, uh, I guess, form, um, and, and, but we want to kind of restore that by, uh, and, and by, so for example, okay, in our bodies, right, we also have this water and fire, right, two of the elements, uh, well, we're made of five elements, but, but the two elements are reversed, are, are, are inverted, okay, so when we are in this phenomenal world, uh, you can say that certain things, we, we are kind of in, inverted, and so to return back um, through this mortal transformation, we want to go back to uh, the true reality, the true self, right, then we have to reinvert <laughs> or upright, you know, right, you know, to, to upright the, 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 the water and the fire. Okay, so when we're born, so most people, right, we have fire, the fire is on top and the water is on the bottom. Okay, and uh, we want to reverse that. Uh, 
uh, position, right? We want to put the water on top and the fire on the bottom. Uh, and that's the way to kind of harmonize the two. Um, when fire is on top, right, and, uh, you know, it's fire is also, uh, you can say, represents, uh, well, you can say it represents temper, right, the anger. Uh, it also represents desires. Um, and so if, if fire is on top, then it's going to burn, you know, uh, uh, without, it, it'll just keep burning, okay? Uh, and so we want to put the water on top to kind of, to, you, you can say to kind of suppress the wa the fire, if you will, um, and so so there's also like uh, you can say uh, there, there's like a, a breathing exercise, kind of the reverse breathing exercise to, to kind of reverse these two, okay, in our body, uh, and that can help. Uh, that that'll 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 reverse the two, and that'll you know that can help suppress our uh, those desires. Uh, those, the anger, things like that. Okay, so but that that's that's something else. Okay, so uh, actually, you know, the 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 teaching that that's the, one of the, the Taoist teachings. Um, they they teach that that type of breathing, that reverse type of breathing, um, and uh, but that that's yeah, that's how you can help uh, do that, regulate that chi within the body. Okay. Um, but anyways, but uh, you know, that's kind of a little bit more within talking about the the forms, but uh, in terms of the the what here you know is saying like to for us to actually I mean that 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 is uh, part of it okay so so but then the other aspect again is is kind of um, you know kind of the the formless aspect uh, we wanted to uh, reverse uh, invert we're, we're inverted so we have uh, we want to reinvert <laughs> ourselves to the, to the right way uh, that we can return back to, to our origin, uh, heaven, okay. So samadhi is the meeting of the minds or a spiritual link that attests to uh, or leads to the awakening of the bodhisattva way and the fulfillment of six paramitas. So yeah, so the uh, so samadhi is definitely uh, an important aspect of the practice, the cultivation, right? As part of the six uh, paramitas, uh, we have to, you know, to, to, for us to become uh, Bodhisattva or Buddha, we, uh, we have to be able to achieve uh, this, this Samadhi. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, right. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, Holy okay, so this is getting back. I mean, this is kind of in the context of Holy Teacher is talking uh, in, in this particular class that he, uh, that he was channeling in. Uh, he says, you know, uh, when Holy Teacher gives a simple instruction, right, he's saying simple, the, sim the word character simple uh, can be viewed as Zen or Zen, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, the idea is to keep things simple, right? Uh, you know, both in terms of action and also in the mind, okay? Uh, you can say Samadhi is, is you know, Obviously, that's the simplest, you know, simplify, uh, you know, our mind to the simplest, right? Because there's, there's, it's empty. I mean, it's very, it's still and calm. There's nothing, right? No thoughts. Uh, no thoughts arise. It's not influenced. So that's like the simplest as possible. So, um, yeah, keep things simple when we're doing things. Uh, and, and don't overthink when we hear things as well. You know, it's like a lot of times we see, or maybe we see things uh, and we, or we hear uh, things that then we, we, we kind of start thinking and we overthink what it is, uh, you know, beyond like the face value of it, of, of what we uh, just heard or saw. Um, and that's where we start getting into trouble because then we think, oh, you know, did that person mean this or did they, you know, whatever. Um, <clears throat> then, you know, we, we're basically, we're creating uh, problems out of nothing, okay? Um, so we shouldn't we shouldn't do that, right? Uh, <clears throat> okay. All right. So uh, we must have a sturdy foundation so that even um, when we are naive, okay, we can still mature because of the Tao. When we have endless pursuits, we can still turn back because of the Tao. When we are busy in life, we can still perceive or experience because of the Tao. Uh, when we have Endless vexations, we, we still can be worry free because of the Tao. Okay, so um, you know, you know, in cultivating the Tao, and you know, of course, samadhi being part of that cultivation, 
practice, uh, you know, <clears throat> we can still uh, overcome some of these, uh, you can say, uh, these are probably maybe our, our faults or, or deficiencies or, or things that we are trying to overcome, uh, obstacles maybe um, uh, in, in ourselves, right? <clears throat> that uh, the, the Tao um, is, because of the Tao, because we're cultivating this Tao, we can then overcome these things, okay? Um, okay, so disciples must uh, recognize our foundation to not uh, call it into question, okay? Um, disciples must affirm our affinity to not have regrets. Disciples must acknowledge our mission to not abandon it. Disciples must identify our golden thread to not go astray, right? So uh, basically, you know, <clears throat> we, we have to know, realize that we, yeah, we have to establish our found, a found, a good foundation so that it doesn't, we don't <laughs> end up, you know, if we have a shaky foundation, uh, in you know our, in our cultivation in our in our in our uh, uh, knowledge of uh, or insight uh, you know into what's the truth or what the truth principles are uh, then you know things can go wrong for us I mean we we will either deviate from the path and we we won't achieve uh, enlightenment in the end okay so uh, yeah, and so, uh, okay, so, yeah, like, so this golden thread thing is very important that we must know that we have this golden thread, that we are part of a golden thread. Uh, just like today, you know, we have members from different temples, uh, different golden threads, different lines, uh, and, you know, we, we sh because of our affinity, it's because of our affinity that we are part of this golden thread, uh, and so we should uh, stick to that, I mean, obviously, you know, it's, it's uh, sometimes affinities can change um, and, you know, uh, but for the most part, you know, we, we stick with our golden thread. Okay. And Holy Teacher has said in the past that, you know, <laughs> you don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be on, you know, have your feet on two boats, uh, you know, for fear that you, you know, it's easy to fall, fall into the water that way and then you won't achieve anything. Okay. So, so again, uh, that's that. So we don't go straight. All right. So Holy Teacher asks, what is the source of disorder and confusion? Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> basically, is it in the temple? All right. Is it the people matters? Is it the gossip? Is it the heart and mind? Okay. So, um, uh, yeah, obviously we encounter, <laughs> you know, uh, lots of different things that are, you know, uh, not, uh, maybe not satisfactory, you know, in the temple. Um, but is that, is it in the temple or is it, you know, is that because of people matters? Yeah, it's usually it's, it's because of people, right? Uh, uh, and well, the people matters that comes about because why well, there's gossip, uh, and then, uh, but why is there gossip? It's coming from the heart and mind, right? Uh, so basically it's the heart and mind that is the problem here, the source of all this disorder and confusion. Okay. Uh, and we have to be, uh, realize that. <clears throat> and so we have to Try to stop things uh, at the source if we can. Okay, um, <clears throat> so Hill teacher says samadhi is observing, uh, basically to not to look, not to look indiscriminately, or not to listen indiscriminately, not to speak indiscriminately, or not to act indiscriminately. Okay, eh, I mean indiscriminately. I don't know if that's that's the the perfect word to use instead of run a uh, run. Okay, so basically. I mean, because there's also this. This looks kind of like the oh, uh, you know, see, you know, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, do no evil. But that that's a little bit more specific, narrow. Uh, this is kind of like anything that um, is not, you know, you know, is not appropriate or is not uh, we shouldn't be doing at the time or whatever. Okay, so um, so basically, yeah, keeping our mind still, not influenced by. Uh, what's going on around us. Okay, so uh, basically this, you know, Holy Teacher was talking about this in the context of that class that they were in, right, because he, he gave instructions to the people there to, you know, first remove the chairs and then put the, the prayer cushions down and then take away the prayer cushions, put the chairs back. Uh, and what Holy Teacher, you know, saw is that it was, it was kind of very disorderly chaos, <laughs> uh, 
and, and things probably weren't put back uh, in uh, very well or, or very, uh, you know, uh, lined up or whatever. Okay, so um, so then teacher also, holy teacher also asked them, you know, to put, uh, well, okay, no, uh, sorry. Uh, he, he was listening, uh, when, when we're listening to class, right, for example, he's saying, you know, uh, Holy Teacher was remarking that, well, people, when they heard a noise, then they divert their attention to that noise, okay? Um, but really, the, the task at hand is to, we're supposed to be concentrating on listening, being attentive to the class, to, to listening to the lecture, okay? As opposed to uh, being distracted by other things that really have nothing to do with you, and not, have nothing to do with the class or the lecture, okay? So... Um, so, like, right now we have the online class and, you know, everyone is at home uh, listening to class and, you know, there, there can be all sorts of distractions. So the question is whether we are really paying attention to the lecture um, uh, despite all the distractions that can happen around you. Uh, and so, you know, obviously in the classroom it's, it's a little bit easier, but then still, you know, there, there could be various things that happen, uh, the noises, whatever, that distract people. Uh, and so, so again, this is a question of whether we have that concentration, the samadhi, right? So uh, to not be distracted, right? Uh, okay, so um, the lesson in life, right, in cultivation is that the world has many distractions, uh, right? Uh, or we, <laughs> maybe people, or sentient beings call them attractions, right? They're attractions, they're attractive. But actually from a cultivator, uh, we should call them distractions, okay? Um, that divert our attention and effort away from the purpose, our purpose, uh, and our goal of cultivation, okay? Uh, and then so we may fail to fulfill our purpose and achieve our goal as a result of being distracted uh, and following, you know, falling into those dis distractions. Um, no matter what the circumstances, we must maintain samadhi, okay, this clear and calm mind, this mind of stillness. You know, whether it's in hardship, for example, uh, you know, Holy Teacher has mentioned uh, basically, you know, people are hungry in class, uh, right? So that, that we have to overcome that. So people are like, oh, man, they're, 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 they're hearing the, the rumbling of their own stomach and, and they, they can't wait for the class to be over. So they're, they're, they're distracted. They're not fully paying attention to the class, okay? So, so no matter what the... The hardships or, or the, the situation is, any, or even in a crisis, uh, that we have to maintain a samadhi, right? So this is part of the course of the cultivation, right? <clears throat> okay, so, yeah, pay attention or concentrate on what one is supposed to do um, uh, at any time, and, and don't be distracted by other things. Otherwise, we might end up not doing the thing so well, uh, or we may not even complete our task, okay? Uh, so don't be distracted, right? And don't deviate from the true principles as well. You can say that that's don't be distracted or, or yeah, don't deviate from, from following our true principles at all times. Okay, so all you teacher says that what we should fear most is confusion, disorder, inversion, disruption, etc. Okay, in the cultivation and propagation of Tao. Okay, um, so, you know, it, you know, in our daily incense offering and bowing, right, there's, there's the repentance where we say, uh, you know, the, basically, you know, if we, you know, are like this, you know, the, if there's disorder, confusion, whatever, disruption in, in, the, in the temples, uh, we ask uh, Maitreya Buddha for uh, forgiveness of our sins, okay? Um, all right, so, so yeah, so we make sure that we don't, uh, so th this means also we follow all the rules and regulations of the temple, okay? So we don't decide that, oh, I'm gonna, I can break the rules uh, like, like for example, there's a certain protocols that are in place um, for for uh, dealing with certain things, and then we have to follow those protocols. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so finally, basically, uh, the paper is basically is to overcome. Uh, you know, at, at a very simple level, is like overcoming anger, right? When we very we can calm our mind uh, and overcome any uh, anger that we might. Uh, otherwise have, right, lack, uh, overcoming lack of clarity, external influences or distractions, confusion, disorderly tendencies, right? We can have single-minded concentration, 
Uh, the practice, all right, so we want to stop any absurd, irrational, wishful thinking. Do not indiscriminately look, listen, speak, act, okay? Uh, discard the three minds, okay? So the past, present, and future, this, this, uh, and the four images, right? the self, ego, others, sentient beings, and life or personality, okay? So we, these are the forms. These are forms that we have to uh, also let go of, right? Because otherwise, these are things that cause us that can cause us to give rise to, to this type of uh, thinking, right? Um, see, uh, okay, so, yeah, also samadhi is also one of the three outflow studies, right, that addresses anger, you know, the three, anger being one of the three poisons, right? But uh, broadly speaking, also, it's, you can say that it's, it's kind of a concentration or samadhi is kind of like a mental discipline, okay? Uh, and so it's kind of like a internal counterpart to precepts, um, although precepts, you know, it's mostly external, but there's also the internal component as well. Okay. Uh, so yeah, and just don't let the mind run wild. <clears throat> okay, so you know, we want to concentrate the mind to not be distracted from our task and principles, um, rein in uh, the scattered mind, right? That, that mind, again, that likes to pursue or is easily distracted by various things outside or by any form really um, uh, so we want to self-reflect and introspect right so bring the mind back uh, to, to bring it back so that it's not disturbed uh, or distracted right? Um, <clears throat> right so you know the mind is kind of like uh, a pool of water right um, so when it is this obviously when that pool of water is disturbed Right? There are waves of turbulence, and, it, and also, you know, it kind of kicks up uh, the, 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 the mud underneath and becomes all murky, right? Uh, so, obviously, when that happens, you know, we can't, <laughs> you can't see, can't, you can't see clearly, right? You can't, you can't think clearly, uh, right? So, but only when the pool of water is undisturbed, uh, it is calm, it is peaceful, it is clear, and it can reflect things perfectly, Okay, uh, so, and then that's also when the, the Buddha nature, the wisdom can reveal itself as well, right? So uh, detachment from forms and stillness of the mind, okay? So uh, we basically want to let go of all karmic affinities and not give rise to a single thought. Uh, and then that's, you know, the, the end result is that getting to that absolute stillness of mind, okay? Uh, or that, you know, that quiescent state, of mind, the state basically that's the Bodhi mind, the Buddha mind. Okay, is in that that is the state of the Buddha mind. Okay, uh, okay, so um, yeah, I guess that's it. All right, so thank you for your attention. I hope <laughs> that you're paying attention. Uh, if I had said anything wrong or not uh, well, I asked the Buddhas for forgiveness and also the corrections from uh, transmitting masters and lectures. Uh, thank you. Uh, are there any questions? I'd like to try to go back to the beginning of the document. Oh, yeah, the first one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one holding the one. The one is our Buddha nature. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, if we are, yeah, holding to, I mean, if we are one, if, if, you know, with the Buddha nature, then, yeah, then we, we won't be attached to the forms, uh, and we'll have that serenity, the tranquil mind, that the quiescent mind. On, on that same slide, um, on the last bullet point, uh, the point, trans, the one point transmission, what is that referring to? Oh, the one point one point transmission is the you can say is the transmission of Tao receiving the Tao right okay. that is the one point transmission. One point means open the gate for our Buddha nature. Yeah, open the gate. Close the gate. Yeah, it's it's opening the portal. Yeah. <laughs>